Alright, tell me once you pick down Champions League so we can talk about picking some bets. Alright, so Elise ban comes out. Uh, that's pretty standard at the moment. Um, Elise did just go through a series of nerfs where she became a little bit less viable as a top laner and a, li uh, a lot less viable as a jungler. Um, she's still, however, very strong. Um, not so great in the, the 1v1 duels anymore, just due to the nature of how they turn down her damage, but still very viable. Yeah, that nerf should be pretty massive that she no longer can repel down into that tower range and let the spiderlings take the first few hits. So it's still interesting though to see her band out first, even with those nerfs, still not, people don't want to play against her it seems. Less surprise from Zac, we've seen how uh, efficient Zac and an Oriana combo can be, that just gap close into the shockwave, not surprised teams just don't want to deal with him, that gap close is just massive, and he's so disrupting, just causes such havoc in team fights. I'm not surprised that they've taken him out. Thresh hasn't been too much in the old bands recently in the Oceanic team, and I'm, he's always just, you're never going to complain, no one wants to play against no, Thresh. No Absolutely does. decent, decent support, can save, can set up kills, can just be in absolute trouble, playmaker of a support hero, not too surprised to see him banned. Draven surprises me a little bit, to be uh, honest. No, it doesn't surprise me. Apexis, the challenger, has something like 550 Draven games played. So I didn't want to call it out so beforehand. So you think it's a target ban coming up? As we were talking so about before, One hell really. of a, a target ban, yeah. <laughs> so he's nearly got half a, cent, uh, half a thousand games played with Draven, so... We got a call coming out saying so Draven is a uh, troll ban, even if you respect the enemy's Draven play. But I agree with you. I think if you're a specialist enough in a hero, it can always be worth banning them out because you just don't want to play someone who's just so much better than you guys with his like specialty hero. Can make all the difference, especially on an ADC. If you can take out something that's just going to instantly win them the game, why not? Am I right? Yeah, most definitely. All right, so we've seen Cassidy and Bane banned out. Now, they're, they're their hyper carries for this Oceanic server. Uh, you see them picked or banned in something like 90% of the high ELO games. I'm not surprised to see Cassidy banned at all. Uh, there are so many players that can play him to a great effect. He is the highest mobility AP hyper carry in the game, so it's just very intimidating to be against a Kassadin that will just scale as as much as a god, really. Vayne, also the AD carry of choice for for most of the, the Oceanic ser uh, server's AD carries as well, so good standard bans coming out, banning out that late game god, really. And we're seeing I Nami even popped in. So I want to be interested in which mid hero is picked up by N64 because with that Cassidy ban, you want to wonder if they're just banning Cassidy because they just think he's some super OP cast they don't want to deal with, or is there a good chance he's actually also going to be a counter pick for the mid they would prefer to run? So this is something we will find out when we see who they do pick up for mid. Yeah. I just think they just don't want to deal with him, but we could find out. And Nami pick up, no surprises there. Everyone's loving Nami on support. Is Jana another safe bot lane? Pretty aggressive. They just they don't mind to show their bot lane hand first. You know you're gonna come up against a support and a and a ADC. Israel Jana both safe picks. So I think that's okay to reveal that lane. It is, yeah. Israel is one of those safe AD carries as well. Like if you're thinking about how do you counter an Israel lane, if you are looking to counter the lane, you pick something like a Graves or a Caitlyn, and uh, neither of those pose too much threat to a skilled Israel. He will just sit back. He will just farm with his mystic shots. He's not gonna die in lane at all, especially not with Ajana. A very passive support, uh, has a lot of CC. She scales very well into late game with that CC. So very strong early pickups coming out from N64. BGN are responding however, and it looks like they are gonna lock in a Jarvan and a Twitch. Now Twitch has so much team fighting potential late game. Uh, I think he scales immensely well. Maybe better than Israel, uh, unless this is gonna be a, a blue Israel who once he hits those core items can be very frustrating to chase around. Um, and Jarvan of course, might see him in the jungle, might not, but very cool hero to run with a Nami and a Twitch. We're seeing like the beginnings of a Wombo combo in my opinion. Those ultimates work very well together. So it'll be interesting to see if they, they kind of aim for that team fighting combination as, as their goal for VGN's lineup. And what do you think about the Zerath that's just been locked in? Yeah, let me have this one! You know I love Zerath! Zerath's my absolute favorite mid hero. I'm so sad they're rebuilding him though. A lot of people were telling me the rebuild is cool. Look forward to it. I love Zerath so much. He's not the best when you're on the chase, when you're on the offensive chase. 
There's not a whole lot you can do, but on the defensive, so strong when you get in a good position. You get Zero from the right position, he can just spit out so much damage. He's such a fun hero to play. He's got that mage change. He can set up the suns. He can spit out so much damage. He can instantly pick up a hero. They've got to be careful, especially the low heroes. Well, low HP heroes like Twitch and Nami, if they get called out, he can unleash his combo. I love Zero and Nautilus in the jungle. You know I love it, Hell Nautilus too. Please run the Astronaut skin. Those two picks, very exciting for me coming out of N64. Two heroes I love, and I'm excited to see it. Oh my god, yes. So Zareth is a cool pickup as well. Um, it kind of punishes the Jarvan pick if Jarvan was meant to be mid laner. Zareth's also, in my opinion, rather hard to counter. If I was thinking off the top of my head who would counter him, and I didn't really come up with anything. Uh, he's not a hero that's played too much, and if you are something like a Zareth specialist, that, that's incredibly intimidating to play against. You know that he's going to be poking you all day. You know that his ult's going to come out and completely wipe away your team. So, would you say that Kassadin would have been a big counter to Zeref? I'm yeah, interested to see what he said. Do you that. think they de deliberately removed Kassadin, hoping to get that Zeref set up? Because if they have, that would be a brilliant ban. Because now they've got to think of something to come up against it. And he can be difficult, because he can stand back and Zeref's happy to play defensive. He doesn't mind just being right out of the way and being out of it. So I don't know what they're going to do. They're going for the Z. They're going up the AD mid. I, I like it. Everyone loves the Z. He's strong. Shin as well. Split push potential. Both really high popular pickups in the pro scene. What do you think about it? I'm not sure who they are going to run in the mid lane. It could be Zed, it could be Jarvan, it could even be a lane swap. Uh, so it's going to be really interesting to see how they play against it. And if you'll note, uh, that there's actually five ADs, uh, sorry, four ADs, coming out from the blue team. I mean, they do have a little bit of ability power scaling. Uh, Nami does have ability power as well, so there's always that on the side. But I would find it very easy to itemize against VGN's uh, team composition. You'd really just build some armor and you'd be all right, I feel. So yeah, it'd be exactly. As see... you said, the only real AP is coming out of Nami, and we're not expecting her to get any big items soon. Yeah, but that being said, uh, in 64's lineup, lacks a designated tank. And as they say that, they do pick the crocodile, so I'm going to retract that statement. I feel like Nautilus and Renekton might be big enough to hold the front line for N64, while, um, you know, Israel and Zareth do bring the damage, and Janna will bring the CC and peel. So I'm well, like... the interesting thing is, it's going to be difficult for them to reach that back line because they have that Janna, they have the Iz who can jump around, and they have the Zareth who will be standing back. But the important thing to bring up is VGN have got the Twitch and the Shen. So they have that ability for Twitch to go invisible, sneak up, the Shen ult come down on the Twitch, and then set up a perfect taunt into that back line. So they have to be careful about that. That's a combination we've seen played quite a bit, and it can just set up amazing team fights and the best way to initiate, really. You get the surprise Shen taunt, you can really just cut that team out. Oh, I agree with you completely. So I'm really liking both team comps. Uh, you've already highlighted the reasons why I like VGN's team comp. I like that they do have this Wombo Combo Ultimate team. I like that they do have Zed for single target damage, who I feel like he might be able to blow up the Zera or this Israel. so I really like that. And I like from N64 sign up, the, the immense amount of utility and peel that the team has in Janna and the poke it has from Zareth and Israel. I feel like they have a very well balanced team comp. And I feel like they're going to be able to deal with this 580 setup uh, very effectively. It's going to be so interesting to get into this game and, and see how it all pans out. And uh, some of the spells have been revealed. Um, I was thinking for a minute there that it might have been Zed Jungle and Jarvan in the middle, but we are seeing Zed that could possibly be in the mid lane unless we do see that lane swap. So. I feel like in standard lanes, uh, N64 have a slight lead. Uh, would you agree with me, or do you have a differing opinion? Oh, wasn't expecting that question, to be honest. You just caught me a bit off guard. That's all right. <laughs> um, uh, I'd say you, I'm not sure about that, to be honest. I, I'm not, I'm not going to agree with you on this one. I feel like they've got such safe... Oh, wait, did you say N64 is the better lineup? I, I feel I like they, they do have, have a, a strong draft. They most definitely have a safe lineup. I don't think they're going to get crushed in any lane. If they play it right, they should be safe in both lanes. That's how I feel. I feel their lane's very safe, and they can get big off that. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. Apart from the fact we're going to see Twitch and Nami being devastatingly aggressive in this bot lane. So it's really, can Israel and Janna hold on? And uh, in the mid lane, I feel like Zareth has a bit of a lead, especially the way that he works with mage chains, the way that his armor works. He's going to be a little bit tankier than Zed normally expects against a mage in the mid lane, so that's always in his favor. And Renekton and Shen in the top lane, for me, that that's his farm lane. Uh, I don't feel like they have too much kill potential on one another without outside influence, such as a jungle gank or a global ultimate. So top lane, farm lane, uh, mid lane, a little bit in Zareth's favor, bot lane, a little bit in VGN's favor. but. 
it really comes down to how these players play the matchups out. And it would be so interesting to see how this level one goes, what lanes they choose to go to, and if they do choose standard meta to see how that pans out for them as well. Yeah, I think the important thing to note is that VGN had first picked the Nami, so in 64 knew they were coming up against quite an aggressive bot lane, so that's why they've opted for the Janna and the Israel. So that's what they obviously feel most comfortable with versus the Nami. They obviously didn't know what the ADC was, but they could. When you see the Nami pick up, you assume that they're going to go aggressive. Therefore, I, I feel like they've chosen what they're comfortable with. We're just going to see now if they can hold off that absolute aggression. That's if we do see ADC support versus ADC support bot. We don't know. We may see a lane swap. We may just see them pressuring. They have uh, buffed the tier 1 towers though recently. So that'll be interesting to see if that uh, deters people from switching lanes so much. But we'll find out. Yeah, that tower buff really was like meant to break up this lane swap meta. Uh, I feel like that wasn't... It wasn't possible for Riot to balance the game with that, that meta, um, with, with just pushing down turrets, as well as uh, keep the, the game balanced for everyone that wasn't a pro pro player. So it was a cool decision to buff the turrets up again. Uh, there's definitely some teams that benefited it more from others. Uh, we see that Cloud9 hype train is still going though. Love those guys. So yeah, and we have reached the end of our delay and we'll be getting into it. Uh, make sure you do jump into Spectator so you're not watching the stream. Yeah, I'm sick, Daddy. Do not worry. I'm not right. doing my classic forget to open my League of Legends, realize I'm watching the stream the whole time. <laughs> it happens to everyone, guys. It's not just me. <laughs> it's just <laughs> me. But, but I'm on to it today. Do not worry, because I am so excited. It's been so long since I've got to watch a real good scrim between two like, big teams. I'm just pumped. Yeah, alright, so we are into the loading screen, and I will be talking about the skins, because skins matter a lot, as we all know. Skins matter the most. It's about looking good, guys, and I'm already upset. It's a Kingpin Twitch, not the Gangster Twitch. Where's your suit at, mate? It's a big event. <laughs> Put the suit on. Try but nice. The Astronaut comes out, though, so I'm stoked about that. Battlecast ZRF2, that's a good ZRF skin. Stoked there. You can take over from here. I'm just done with the ones that matter to me. <laughs> <laughs> Shockblade Zed, man. I love Zed at the moment. He is such a cool champion. His kit is incredible. And Shockblade Zed, it's the only skin you can pick for Zed at the moment. But it's definitely worth it. He has one cool ninja. And we have Varaxel that hasn't connected yet. Um, this has been happening a lot since this latest patch. So don't worry, guys. He will be reconnecting shortly. Um, Probably before we even hit the end of this loading screen, he'll probably load it and we'll have to wait through it. He yep. is loaded in. We don't have to wait. It is pretty common in the old Oceanic server to see that, so glad to have him on and getting ready. Yeah, so Surgeon Shen. I like that skin as well. I was, I was going to talk about Shen skins beforehand. Um, who do you feel like... Oh, sorry. What do you feel like the coolest Shen skin is? Uh, I know that the Warlord Shen is uh, Oceanic Gaming's uh, Woody Woo. He likes that skin a lot. Uh, Surgeon Shen, though, is probably my favorite. What about you? Do you have a favorite? Oh, Surgeon Shen is by far the best uh, Shen skin, purely on the fact that you can run Surgeon skin with other assassins and no longer get your minus one HP or whatever oh! it is. <laughs> it instantly is the best because it makes the most difference. Meta skins. I like it. Especially any skin that involves sunglasses also make them better than anything else. Yeah. All right, so Varaxla and Funmon already got that like fantastic communication going, making sure he takes a different skin so he doesn't get that minus one to assassin damage. So yeah, good stuff. Um, um, we have complaints from the from the uh, from the chat, and I have to bring it up. We're disappointed in no Jarvan skin. I run Commando Jarvan skin because it gives you that minus one sunlight damage from Leo. Oh, it's, te te <laughs> it's, all, it's about the tactics, man. You got to be in on there. Skins make the difference. I uh, run. Warring Kingdoms, Lu Bu J J4. Uh, that skin is awesome. It, you can't get more awesome than like creating volcanoes when you ultimate man. There's just no no game beyond that. It's Lu Bu. Don't get me started on bloody Lu Bu. <laughs> Why do I always think I can fight him? You can't fight Lu Bu. No, you just can't. Don't waste an hour. All right, so we're seeing a very defensive lineup coming from N64. Uh, basically, what they've done is they've taken every single entrance to their base and they've found some way or another to protect it. So, Renekton's in the tri brush, they've got a ward uh, defending their red entrance, they're sitting in the mid lane, they're sitting in the bot lane rivers, and it's a very defensive. You're not going to get past them, you're not going to get those sneaky wards in without N N64 knowing it. They went to those positions almost instantly, and I've got to say, it's uh, a very smart way to start your game. 
We're yeah, seeing... by taking just first impressions of uh, N64, I feel like they're a very reactive team. They've gone for a defensive lineup. They've gone for a defensive start. I feel like they're just going to play defensively, have a confident start, and then just wait for mistakes and react off them. We see this quite a bit with teams too. Generally, teams are either quite aggressive playmaking teams, or they are the reactive countering teams. It's just about like the style and difference between players, and, it, and that's how I feel they're, they're, that's they're going to play their game. I might be wrong though, might just see a super aggressive Xerath making the plays, some Jana trying to make the ultimates, push dudes into towers and whatnot. But that's just my impression of the team. Yeah. Alright, so we saw that VGN did invade, they got a couple of nice wards down. Both the wards they placed were 3 minute wards for any of you curious support players. So they're going to have Vision on the red buff and where the jungler goes after he has completed his natural blue. Uh, the way that it works in the jungle is you generally start the side closest to your 80 carry and support so you can get the best best leash possible. Then you progress to your next buff and then you gank the lane closest to you. So what we predict is seeing Nautilus taking his red buff and heading top to gank the Shin. J4 will probably take his blue buff and gank top as well for his Renekton. So. Yeah, and just what you're talking about, those support wards, we've seen both the support players do what's now considered common of skipping that mana, oh, lost to the mana crystal, the mana regen, to fairy come charm. into the, the, the fairy charm, there you go, lost it for a second, and opting for those extra wards. And that's just because with the jungle change, that early vision just means so much more. So it really that's does. Where, that's really actually affected the, the support player a bit. And look, we got Israel just taking a lot of damage yeah. earlier. Lane. That's quite surprising to see how quickly he took it. He does have to be careful. You do not want to get this uh, Twitch just absolutely snowballing on you. And uh, Apexus did it really cleverly. He got four stacks of his poison off and before he did fire his expunge. So it was it was well well played. At the same time, we have Rex still rotating top with his chin. No, sorry, all over the place. It's J4 rotating top, doing that gank, putting Renekton on half health. So we already see this defensive lineup take a bit of damage, which is quite surprising to see. Yeah, we've actually got Nautilus creeping around behind the Zed. If Bun Bun does use his Living Shadow, he's going to be quite vulnerable to some Nautilus CC. But Nautilus is just going to steal this Wraith Camp away. So we actually did see the main change set up to get the stun, but the, as you said, the jungler decided to take the Wraith instead. Yep, um, that's good. Uh, J4 is actually a little bit behind at the moment. Nautilus will hit level 4 before him. Uh, there's a slight disparity in creeps, but that's okay at the moment. Nautilus actually gets a nice dredge line onto the Zed. Uh, Zed has fallen to about half HP. Zerath sitting at the back, very, very happy with himself. That is Battlecast Zerath. Quite a nice skin, I reckon. It's almost as cool as Scorched Earth that, you know, creates volcanoes and craters and everything when he buys his abilities. That's very cool as well. You just love volcanoes, don't you? I, I think I just <laughs> love volcanoes, guys. They just want more volcanic skins. If you're out there, right? Your boy for more volcanic skins. He wants volcanic <laughs> everyone. I have Fire a all day. Yeah. Fire all day. Volcanic <laughs> All right. So just a, a little bit of a poke game going on at the moment. Uh, Israel did heal up in the bot lane. Just some nice life steal. He was running. Just gonna double check for you guys, but he is running four percent life. Oh, sorry. He's running seven percent life steal. Now that is interesting. So I'm going to double check his masteries, but he might have the 4% lifesteal and also be in the utility tree. So I'll look up, look that up for you guys uh, while, while the game's going. Because that's really he interesting. Being out CS, he is 6 behind the Twitch at the moment and being almost by his tower. They're not fighting under the tower just yet, but they're right by it. So he's having a bit of a hard time at the moment. Hopefully he can turn it round, get this bot lane a bit better. Alright, so I just looked that up for you. He's running 6% life. Oh wow, first blood in the top lane. Nice Nautilus gang. Very cool. Uh, Shen did waste both his taunt and his flash trying to get away there. Um, was not able to get enough distance and the ignite did bring him down. So, nicely played. First blood does go to the Renekton. So, right, getting back on top of that Israel. Uh, he's running 6% life steal from his runes as well as one point in vampirism and the utility tree. So, he has that 7% life steal and that's why he's able to go back up to full HP so quickly after the Twitch did get some really nice damage on him early game. So, well played by him, thinking ahead, thinking that he would be taking that damage and basically specking right for this match. And uh, Ward worth 3 going on in the dry brush. Jana does pink ward, another one of Purple's on Nami's wards. So, more gank potential for Nautilus in the bot, bot lane if he does choose to get it. Sorry, I think we might have lost People's Whisper. Have you muted your microphone or are you gone, my friend? Nice bubble landed on Shrandy in, in the bot lane. He didn't fire his expunge as Janna's storm shield was up. It looks like 
the lanes are pretty standard at the moment. Uh, this, I'm just gonna realign my overlay so I can tell who's beating who in CS. So Twitch does have a slight advantage over Israel, but nothing to write home about. Nautilus is a hit. He both has an assist and a couple more CS, but those are small camps, so they're not really eligible in terms of goals. Uh, Zareth and Zed are actually doing very similarly, which surprises me, uh, just because I feel like Zareth should have an earlier advantage just with range versus melee. And do we have you back? Alright, I'm sorry, I am back. I got a phone call from my boss and had to suddenly jump off. But I'm right. back in. So I'm back in and good to, good to be back. I see I missed first blood. I'll have to quickly catch up. Looks like it went down. Woo! Renekton picking it up. Alright, yep. I'm back in, I'm back in, guys. <laughs> Alright, welcome back. So... Apexis and Purple haven't gone back yet in the bot lane. Uh, Apexis on Twitch is sitting on 1500 gold, enough to buy his BF sword. So he's going to be looking to go back and, and bank as soon as humanly possible. He doesn't want to leave the lane pushed in either direction though. Uh, so he might just uh, try to shove it out and get it onto the turret before he goes home. That's always a safe way to play your lane. And uh, Zed has hit level 6 as well. Uh, so he has a little bit of kill potential on the Zareth, in my opinion. Zareth did opt to take barrier. Do you feel like that was a wise decision against Zed? Uh, well, the problem with, uh, what, what else you gotta run? Usually, te uh, teleport's extremely popular in Xerath. The problem with Ignite is a lot of the time you won't be in range to cast it anyway. Barrier's always good in the defense. Also against that Zed ult, they probably just want the barrier to try to keep himself taking so much damage and to keep himself alive. So, I see nothing wrong with the barrier pick up on the Xerath. No, it's very cool. Uh, you know how Karthus actually takes exhaust? I feel like that would also be very viable on a Xerath to take as well. Uh, just because if someone is close enough to you, you're probably in a lot of trouble. So being able to exhaust them and get that kite potential or to more easily land your skill shots, I think that'd be very cool. I'm not a I feel player like myself, a good but... Xerath should just never be in melee range. If you're good, you won't need it. <laughs> oh, so don't run that. Shots fired, alright. I won't do that. <laughs> Aggressive calls coming out from the people's footstep, but I'm not afraid to do it. I reckon it's bad. Alright, alright. No, that makes sense to me as well. Alright, so... At 7 minutes and 15 seconds is when the buff rotation starts back up again. So you see them start back in the jungle, picking up the red and blue buffs. Uh, maybe passing the red or blue to the carries, but it looks like Jibbers has taken both of his. He is going to be able to gank this Renekton in the top lane, so take it away, people's whisper, as soon as he goes in. Now that's if he goes in at the moment, he's just being a patient jungler, having a look, but I believe he will come out. Here he comes out, the Renekton's gone a bit forward and used some of the spells. He's going to jump and he's going to go for the slow. He's got the double buff too. The ult does come over Renekton, so he's going to flash as well. Really wants to get away, but here comes that Demacia, the ult from Java, locking him in and guaranteeing the kill. So a nice little gank there from Jibbers. Very nice gank. So what he did there was he waited for Renekton to go in with Slice and Dice before he started the gank. And a really effective, really patient way to gank as well. Uh, for all of you aspiring junglers in the Twitch chat, uh, make sure that you do do that. You can just wait until they use their, their mobility abilities before you go in, and it worked out so well for him. And another thing is, he had waited till he saw the flash before activating his ultimate because he didn't want to just uh, blow it too early, get flashed out, and escape. So it was really well done by him. He wasn't for he didn't feel the pressure, waited to cast all his spells at the right time, and in return, got the kill. And that's why I think being patient is extremely important as a jungler. You've got to know when to go in and when to cast your spells. So well done by him. Yeah, most definitely. He did set up that Doran's tent. He uh, sat there for a little while in his in his camping bush, but yeah, that was all right. That's exactly what you should do as junglers: be as annoying as humanly possible, uh, and it works out so well. So we're seeing Twitch uh, extend his lead to about 10 CS over this Israel. Um, that's still a very small amount of gold lead. Uh, just checking the gold, it is 2,900 to 2,800. So yeah, definitely. It's a lead in CS, but it's not enough of one at the moment to make a huge difference in itemization. And we are seeing uh, Blue Israel. He has picked up his Vamp Scepter. He has got a tier. So it's most likely going to be a Bloodthirsty first item for him. And the tier is just for sustain in lane. Nautilus has pulled ahead in CS as well. Uh, but looking at the gold between Jarvan and Nautilus, it's very similar because Jarvan did pick up that kill on Nectin in the top lane. So he does have the extra 250 gold from that, uh, so it's definitely in his favor. Looks like J4 is going to try a gank on Xerath in this mid lane as well. It is not warded. Uh, Xerath does not know he's there, so good place to set up. They did see Xerath place the ward in that top rush as well, uh, which is kind of strange. You usually place it whatever side there is more camps on. So if you're on blue side, you place it in the bulb bush. Javan is showing himself, maybe looking for an opportunity, but nothing happens because of it, so that's alright. 
Yeah, it looks like he's decided just to back off here. He is hanging around still, looking for an opportunity. His race is gone, so he's just he's just being a casual jungler. You've got to be patient. Jibber Shoney is patient, but he does know that sometimes you've got to call it quits. So good on him. In the meantime, the score's just still one for one. So it's quite just the patient game at the moment. Nothing really happening. Just farming. Not too surprised, though. Both teams don't look too afraid to take it late. No, they don't. And taking it late... Both teams have very well scaling champions. I feel like Xerath scales incredibly well. Once he does pick up a couple of that magic penetration items and some ability power, he can shred through most of VGN's lineup. Uh, even Shen the tank, yes. Xerath is one yeah, of those. Yeah, and he'll be really happy if he's able to just blow up that Twitch and get rid of Twitch really quick, because Twitch is going to become quite a large problem if they cannot deal with him, especially if he can just happily farm bot. And I don't, I don't think he's afraid to do anything but that. He just wants to get big and then start chomping out the whole lineup. So they've got to have a plan for Twitch. I feel like Xerath can do it. I agree as well. And I've seen both from the Twitch, and I was going to bring it up, that Xerath did aim to get this at Athene's Unholy Grail before he has finished his Seeker's Arm Guard. Meanwhile, in the top lane, Jibbis actually misses his Demacian standard, flashes in though, gets a nice Dragon Strike off, and does pick up that kill. So, and well we do played a bun by bun there. On the Hang around bot lane. He hasn't gone in yet, he's just in the bush, but Phyraxel's gonna run. Nautilus is in there and popping out the ultimate. He is gonna go down. Nort wants a double kill though, so he's chasing down Jibbers as well. Gonna put out a bit of damage. He's gonna use his shield to slow him down, so the Nautilus is gonna back off. But he'll be happy to at least come in and clean up that one kill. Yeah, nice pick up. And, Zen and here we go, bot lane. We are going to get the pickup from Twitch, even with the Janna ult not being enough to save. That's the Ezreal down, and that's not what they want at all. They'll, they're Twitch just to get bigger and bigger. No, definitely not. He's actually sitting on 1,800 gold right now, and he's about 500 gold away from picking up almost an, a full Infinity Edge on this next back. So that's a very scary place to be against a Twitch. Uh, he looks like he is going to shove down this turret as well. He is just tanking it at the moment. He actually opts to leave it alive. It was one more hit from going down. So he probably wants to sacrifice his creep wave to it in some way or shape or form. Uh, that, that's very clever thinking. It is always good to deny your lane opponent some CS when possible. So it's just going to kill off a couple before it goes down. But, you know, everything matters when it comes down to it. So He got the one creep. But that could be the one creep that makes the massive difference if he goes back to base and he's just 20 gold off an item, has to wait a few seconds. <laughs> All time makes the difference. I'm a big believer in the littlest things making all the change. The big old butterfly effect, isn't it? One little flap of the wings. It could be that one creep that makes a massive changing point later on. Who knows? Yeah. So could be the experience text from level 10 to 11 where the ultimate would have just done that much more damage. You never know. <laughs> Tactical CS. All right. So pings are going down, and it looks like Jibbers was carrying a pink ward. Very nice of him. Clears the dragon pit as well. So Janna's going to be pretty peeved about that. She just put that pink ward down. Java cleared it 10 seconds later. That's always the way of supports though. They get a really rough end of the stick. Um, and John is looking pink ward that again. So, World, World War 3 again. Uh, in the top lane, Shin does have that Stand United up. Uh, it's not been on cooldown, hasn't been used just yet. So he does have that global presence up, whereas there is no global presence coming out from the champions from N64. So. That's a good thing to note at this point in the game, when we are getting to the point where, where champions will start dying very quickly because the damage is there. Yeah, I feel like at the moment this game keeps going VGN's way, but they are an all AD lineup, so they can get countered quite hard by armor. So we'll see if that plays later on, but at the rate it's going, I feel like it, VGN will be very happy with the start of this. They will be, and as I did say, uh, Twitch did get enough gold for that Infinity Edge. And wow, in the mid lane, Xerath getting some nice damage onto the Zed. Zed is actually going to get away under 100 HP and switch Nami and Chavana getting on the Xerath. <laughs> That's so dangerous. Even though they've already won that fight, you've got to be so careful about the Shen ulti onto the Twitch. It just makes him so much stronger, gives him the extra defense he needs. And then that taunt setup, you do not want to get a lineup of your heroes taunted into that spray and play coming out of the Twitch. They always have to be careful about that. And it's going to be so deadly. We're going to see the first dragon go here towards VGN. So that's going to give them even more of a snowbally lead. They're already 5 2, but the gold is only surprisingly 2k to their favor. I expected it to be higher. It's. I yeah, I think it's just a little bit of, uh, but just the CS, I think. Um, there's good CS on Renekton, uh, good CS on the Nautilus as well, so that, that's probably where all the difference lies, and that's about 50 or 60 CS, and that's probably where we're seeing the, the gold equilibrium, really. And 
Renekton's actually going to get a turret in the top lane because he was not there for the dragon fight. But BG are going to get a turret in the mid lane. And I know you're a huge advocate of getting this mid turret first because it does open yeah, up. Yeah, so I definitely pressure. rate that mid tower out of the tier threes. That's the one you want down. It really opens up the map, just gives you more access into the jungle, and just really takes a load of vision off the enemy team. Just losing that mid lane tower is really painful. So I, I'm a big fan of taking it. That's my favorite tower to kill, and I love to kill it early. Yeah, so yeah, that, that was a good pickup by BG. And then they got the turrets, they got the kills. Uh, they did lose top turret, but I think that's okay. Shen will be split pushing all game. Three men just went top and did pick up their Renekton, and Renekton did go down. And that's not a good place for him to be, in my in my opinion. He was sitting on a lot of gold uh, after he had pushed back that turret. So he hadn't gone back and banked yet, and they did collapse on him, and they picked up a nice kill there. And now we're going to see... We're gonna see N64 come try to take out this mid tower. The, the Zero is spinning out his ulti, doing a whole lot of damage to that Twitch. He could be in trouble here. The Izzolt comes up too, and he just survives. He's so low, he gets a heal. He might even swap his Nord, and his Nord is putting out all the damage he can. He finally goes down. The shutdown damage goes to the shutdown gold, sorry, goes to the Janna. So they'll be happy with that. At least that went to the support. But she had to. Like, Janna had no choice but to take that. He was just not going down. They that wanted was to not gonna get him. This. It, was, it was looking really good for the Twitch, and they had to commit so much onto him. But they did take him. They did take the mid tower too. That gold gap is still just around the 2k mark. So they're keeping himself in there really well. But man, I, I'm scared of this Twitch. I've got this feeling there. The people's with this feeling is this Twitch is going to be very dangerous later on. Yeah, he's already picked up a build toward a Cutlass. Usually you see people pick up the Infinity Edge and then opt for some crit items uh, and attack speed items. So usually pick up a Zeal, maybe a Phantom Dancer or a Static Shiv, depending on how you're feeling. I know that a couple of people are just huge advocates of that Static Shiv, but I prefer, personally prefer Phantom Dancer. So it would be cool to see what Twitch does get, but he has started heading towards that uh, Blade of the Ruined King. So he is going for, you know, the hyper scaling before he does get, you know, some of the, the mid-game mid items you normally expect. And I quite like the pickup. Alright, so Renekton is just farming his jungle in the top lane. Um, he's at a good place item-wise. He has got a Black Cleaver. He is hitting towards something with a Giant's Belt. So I'm, I'm probably going to say that is going to be a Warmogs or a Sun... Uh, sorry, a Sunfire Cape, yeah. And this Israel is really funny. He's a classic ADC. You see him throw a mystic shot over into the race to snipe the big wraith off the jungler. Hopefully his jungler <laughs> knew he was going to do it and was okay with it, putting the gold towards the AD carry. But that is just a funny AD carry move to do, to just take all the creeps you can. Israel has finished his mana moon. I'm just going to check how many stacks he's on. 264 out of 750. So he's not close to finishing that mirror mana by any means necessary. So... Uh, that's going to be a big power spike when he does finish it, but that doesn't look like to be anytime soon. Um, and as an ADC player, what do you think about this red pot pickup from the Twitch? He's just walking around with red pot, willing to activate it. Do you think it's for the bait, that sneaky health? Do you still think it's worth on an ADC to just grab it this early, or should he bank that gold towards finishing his uh, later of the room king quicker? I quite like it. Just the amount of damage that Xerath is going to put onto him, you do want that extra survivability. So I'm just going to check. I think it's going to give him about 200 health, uh, which probably won't keep him alive if Xerath lands everything. But if Xerath misses a skill shot, and you know people are human, so they, they probably will miss something, he might it might keep him alive. So I do like the pickup. Uh, you can fire it before you use Spray and Prey, and you get that, that edge on your damage, and I feel like it's really going to benefit him. So I do like it. I would have personally used the gold to buy like a dagger or something like that, but it's going to work out for him in the long run, I feel. He's in a very good place at the moment. 3 and 1, 161 CS. Very strong. And our John has picked up an Oracles. Good timing for that Oracles as well. So has the Nami, and it's starting to be clear the wards, place the wards. VGN posturing very aggressively on all three turrets. Zed in the bot lane. Nami, Twitch, and J4 in the mid lane, and we've got Shen endlessly split pushing in the top lane. So they're doing a kind of Dignitas style, shove down all the lanes at once, apply pressure when you're ahead so no one can, can really deal with you, and I, I think it's working very effectively for them. Yeah, we just see constant pressure coming out on all three lanes. So they're all down by their towers, the constant push coming out. I wouldn't be surprised if soon we see another tower eventually crumble. They picked a defensive lineup and they're farming really well. We've gone over this. The gold is still the same, but I feel like this pressure coming out is slowly crumbling. They actually, they need something to start. They need to start winning team fights or something. I feel like if they just keep at this pace, 
they're just going to eventually break into the high grounds and the game be over. So I'm interested to see what Int's going to come out with, where this team fight's going to come out with, and what they're really trying to do with this lineup. Yeah, I agree. I feel like the the changing point will be when they do start getting some armor. Uh, Xerath still hasn't picked up his Seeker's Arm Guard, and that, that should have been his core item for this game, in my opinion. Against four uh, You champions. do have to remember that I believe Xerath's uh, passive, though, does give him armor. It does, yeah. But I feel like... Uh, it's only 15.91 at the moment, so yeah, it's not exactly. a massive amount. It's definitely not holding off 5 AD heroes. So I do agree with you there. I thought it might have given him a bit more, but it really doesn't. He even got himself quite a bit of MR, surprisingly, because he's gone for the Unholy Grail. I don't believe that's why he's gone it. But he, it does pick him up 40 MR. So it's, it's, it's kind of weird to see him prioritize that over armor, but he's probably the better Xerath, so I'm not going to question him. Yeah, so it's but there we go. As I, we do see the towers start going down. They're just getting chipped and chipped. They're pushing all three lanes as well. So if they invest too much mid, the other lanes are going to go down. They have to have one top, one bot, and then their three mid can just siege a little bit better. And that's really what's doing it with this push. And it's a clever push too. It takes a lot from teams to just get out of that five-man lol style where they just collect together, run around as a five, and win team fights. And this is really what shows you like how well teams practice together and how good players are when they can start split pushing, split pushing multiple lanes as well, and just knowing how to how to really throw off teams, especially teams that prefer the fight as the 5v5. Yeah, yeah, you've hit the nail on the head. We actually saw Arcane Barrage coming out from Xerath there, trying to get some damage onto the Twitch, trying to push down the wave. They definitely pushed it away from the inner turret, which is exactly what they want to do. I feel like, wow, there's actually Zed being stand united in the bot lane. Are they going to pick this Renekton up? And they do. Very nice pickup. Uh, that was Zed all inning the Renekton. He did fire his Blade of the Ruin King, did get the Ignite off, had to flash pretty much every single cooldown, and it was enough to bring down that very tanky Renekton. So, nicely played. In the meantime, it looks like Dragon's going to be the next big objective that everyone's looking at. We both see both teams start to make their way towards it. However, VGN are just going to go straight in there and start the Dragon up. The whole other team, though, is rotating down and getting rid of the fight. Then we're going to see them actually just jump straight in there. Israel comes out. We see the Nullus ult come out, too. We've got the Nami trying to disengage. Twitch, though, coming in really good and catching that Xerath by himself. Finally, Nullus comes in and starts peeling for him. He's got the spray and base. He's going to make sure he aims those the targets right. And Xerath goes down. The Ignite was on him, and Paraxel's going to pick it up on that Shin. So they're going to be happy there. That was really well played by Twitch to get that position. Now he's in the J4 ult come. Got a hold of a bit. Jana drops the Twitch as well. Nautilus runs left. Is runs down the bit. Is gets taunted. This is really bad for him. He goes down. It's double kill to Twitch. They're still going. They're going to keep pushing this. They want that mid tower. If they can break into the high ground this early, it's going to be really strong. They've got 20 seconds for Jana's up. And then one second after that, Xerath will be there too. So they don't have much time. But with Twitch, they definitely can put a whole lot of damage into this mid tower. And it's only Renekton there to protect that at the moment. Nautilus is healed up though. So he is going to make his way down, but I think he's going to be too slow. He most definitely is. They're going to get into the high ground. They're going to break this tower. That was a massive fight for them. I believe they got Dragon too. So they got Dragon. They've broken into high ground. A break into high ground is such a big deal because that's really where you can start the turtle when you have that tower up. So to get that mid tower down for free like that, that is massive. And that's really going to help VGN out. We see Nord I mean, Nazir after what he does best though. Those long range pokes really start to spit out the damage. And Purple's going to be the sacrifice. He doesn't mind though. He turned around. Good He's going to die dead death in the face. He wasn't afraid. He turned around, <laughs> ran up all the heroes and said, Take me. Oh, I'm not afraid. So, well, <laughs> Burgle, really sticking it out there for his team. But wow, what a play. They get drag, and they mainly, that mid tower, that mid tower made so much, especially with the Xerath in the lineup. Before that, if they could position themselves behind that tower, they would have been really hard to push. Renekton up front, Xerath behind there is as well. Those two poking it out. They really wanted to fight at that tier 3 tower. So to lose that is actually huge, I believe. It really is. Uh, Xerath is almost at Rabadon's. So this is so interesting. He's just not opting, op not opting for any defensive items at all. Really just stacking that ability power. Uh, I feel like Rabadon's is going to be a good pickup because he does have so much penetration from both his mage, uh, Locus of Power and from his Sorcerer's Shoes as well as Runes and Masteries. So he's going to really pile on the damage once he has finished the Rabadon's. So it'll be interesting to see if he positions well enough to not go down to the so aggressive Twitch J4 Zed and Shen. Uh, it's gonna be so hard for him, but if he does it, he's gonna he's gonna have the potential to put out some serious damage. And you're completely right, that mid turret being gone is is gonna be so hard for them to hold on. When VGN do decide to push down this inhibitor, they'll be able to walk into the base and very aggressively take it, I think. And we're seeing actually Shen is the only one in the mid lane at the moment. It looks like Nami and Twitch are in the bot lane just pushing it out, and Zed is in the top lane. 
And at the moment, I feel like Zed can and 1v1 almost anyone. He does have Last Whisper, Brutalizer, and Blade of the Ruin King. And he is going onto this Renekton, getting some really sick damage down. Yeah, in the meantime, it looks like they're just interested in getting these tier 2 towers. That surprises me, but they obviously just don't want to get baited into still diving into that base. They know they can get these other towers easy and really start pushing the base. They've got the split push down real well. They've got Zed up top instead of Shen, which is funny, because he can't teleport him. But they don't even care. They can just do so much damage in the split. They're definitely picking up this tier 2 here. There's just more gold their way, more map advantage their way, and there's not a whole lot Int can do. They're really backed into their base here. They can't really move around the map, and if VGM want, they can pretty much happily farm the map and get bigger if they'd like to. Zeref here, this is what I'm talking about. It's so hard to push them up when they have a tower because Zeref can position himself so well on the high ground and just spit out a bunch of damage. But we do see they're really just distracted with Zed. He's got that top tower now. So they've only got two towers left before it's their base, just their Nexus towers. And they've got to be careful. This just, they can just slowly squeeze in them out of the game, really. Yeah, they can. And this is a very effective style of, of pushing it against someone like a Zeref. He can only be in one place at one time, so they're pushing two different places. This inhibitor is taking some damage, but it feels like they're not gonna be able to get it. The dread, uh, sorry, the depth charge comes out on the Twitch. Twitch has stealth. He might go back in. He's in a very good place at the moment for damage. He has finished that Blood of the Rune King, and Twitch has shown himself. Zareth is getting some nice poke off from the back though, so I feel like N64 can maybe hold this. Uh, Zid has recalled, so it could be a 4v5 in favor of N64. So I hold faith that they're gonna be able to hold on, hold on at the moment. And N64 are chasing aggressively. Uh, this could be turned on them. Uh, Twitch does have a spray and pray up at the moment. We see the re uh, the, try the attempt of a re-engage come out of the Nami, but they had already moved away from that tidal wave. I'm surprised they want it as a lot of them are half health, but they're just probably hoping they could catch one or two of the stragglers behind. But they're just going to disengage here. All teams go back. We still have the Baron up. That's a big objective. In the meantime, wouldn't be surprised if we just either keep seeing them push all the lanes, try break on the other towers. Or just go mid. They really need to get an inhib down. That would really just break the game this early. Really make it a lot easier for them. In the meantime, VGN definitely in the driver's seat at the moment. And N64 needs to find something in that bag of tricks of theirs to get them back into this game. Yep, and they are strong players. They can definitely do it. Uh, they're heading a sweeter spot item-wise than they were before. Renekton has finally finished that Sunfire Cape. They have finished the Lock of the Iron Solari on the Nullis. They're definitely getting those defensive items now. They needed them earlier, but they have them now. And let's see if they can... If, it, if it's enough to tip the balance in their favors. I feel like Zareth, he has so much ability power, 332. His damage is going to be ridiculous. So they definitely have the damage potential coming out from him and from the Renekton and the Ezreal. So it's whether or not they can hold on, uh, can keep this inhibitor up, and can stop VGN's dominance, really, on this map. So well played by them for holding on and uh, not, not giving up, even though they are at a bit of a disadvantage at the moment. Living to five at almost 30 minutes into the game, and we're looking at an 8,000 gold lead for VGN. Uh, not insurmountable, but it's definitely going to be an uphill battle for N64. Yeah, they definitely still they farm really well and they've kept that gold gap down. It's finally pulled away, as you're saying. But they're still definitely in it, and they still definitely can win it. They've got all the inhibs up, so it's definitely not over. But we're going to finally see this Baron objective be targeted. That's not too surprising. It is warded, though. The Janna just gets a ward down now. So they do know what's happening, and the team is moving around to do it. Purkle, though, doing some aggressive D warding up there. I do like it. It's going to blow his flash, though. Afraid of that Renekton. And it doesn't like VG and R going to disengage here. They don't want to risk the game big time on the Baron. To lose their team could be painful. So they've gone the smarter option. And look at Zeref. He's in a lot of trouble here. The Shen's caught him out alone. He is going to get taunted in. But the disengage from the Janna, well played by that support, getting him out of there. And then we're going to see Jibber's aggressive flash over, throwing out the ult. And here comes the tidal wave as well, but they are seeming to get all of there. they got to watch out. That Xerath damage can come to so far. Well, the ult from Death, though, committing to Xerath. There's that barrier we're talking about. Doesn't keep him alive, though. Bun Bun picking up the kill, but he is going really aggressive for it. Shen ult's going to come in, though. Can Shigan here and save him? He does taunt, pick up a lot. Nice. Bun Bun does go down, go. So they do still lose, but they've got themselves in a nice position. But here we go, a lot of damage coming out, and they do successfully take up Twitch. They'll be really happy there, and they can turn this off this. J4 is now in trouble, getting smashed by that Renekton. He's going to jump over the wall and try to get away. It's just Purkle and Shen now. J4 is still hanging around, but he's low health. But that's all they need. They do take up the support, and this Shen is just going hand mode, going right up on that Ez. He now decides to back out. He is low, 
And well, uh, it's Purkle. Purkle's really gonna get in there and save Jibbers. Jibbers could be in trouble. But we know Purkle isn't afraid to die for his team. But the juggler hanging around, they want to try to see if they can force another kill out of this. But I reckon Purkle's just gonna go down. He most definitely is. The sacrificial lamb, once again, truly committing to that support role that he does so well. Really selfless support coming out for him. So that's great to see. Jibbers doing a sneaky recall, just getting away. And wow, that team fight really turned around. Twitch got picked off. But Twitch had a bit better positions. They could have won that. But the team did the right decision. They saw they got him off. Nautilus held them down and they just pop that Twitch. And that's what they need to do, just pop the Twitch. Make sure that damage can't come out. But yeah, that's Zerath. He went down before the fight even began, really. He did have barrier, but it's just not enough. He didn't have any armor. The death mark popped for so much damage. And Zerath, he, he needs to get that Zonyas. He needs to be able to fire it when, when Zed starts his burst damage so that he can avoid being one-shot. At the moment, he is probably the highest damage champion on this map. I feel like he's probably out-damaging Twitch if he lands his full combo. So he really needs to be up for his team, he needs to be there and putting out the damage. And I feel like Zonya's Hourglass or a defensive item will help him do that. So Baron definitely wasn't picked up just then. Uh, it was nice of VGN to back off, but it means it's still up on the map and N64 need to get some map control around that area. There's so many wards down, they need that Oracles to, to start clearing and it has timed out on Janna. It has been picked up on Nami. She has an Oracle sitting on her inventory. So it's gonna gonna start the, the vision control again around that Baron. They will start posturing. We will see a, a Baron dance as it were. And hopefully N64 can hold on. It will be the tale of the underdogs. It will be, but they did well that last team fight, and if they can pick up a few more, who knows, they could probably pull ahead. They've got good defensive heroes, so anything is still possible. That is for sure, but it is just gonna get harder and harder for them. While the, this Shen just before was massive, he was getting really scary. They've got to watch out for Shen, they've got to watch out for Twitch. It's becoming a lot of priority targets coming out, and it's going to be really intense. We see Shen just turning straight onto this Ezreal, chomping him out. Is just to be careful about that. He cannot take on the, uh, the Shen one on one. Even when he throws his ult, only tickles the Shen. He's just so strong at the moment. Yeah, Shen has picked up a Randuin, a Sunfire Cape, and it looks like he's heading towards some magic resist item. I don't know what he's going to buy with that spectral cowl. It, it's most likely going to be a spirit visage though, and I feel like that's going to work out against the Zerath. And that cooldown reduction is definitely going to help him out as well. Spirit visage is actually a, a, such a strong magic resist item, just just based on on the recent changes. Really, we're actually seeing Stan United being used to save Zed in the top lane as he does assassinate the Renekton, but he was a little bit worried about that ignite. So nice, nice Stan United there coming out from Varaxel. Just. Offering some moral support to the, the Zed. And we are seeing the, the death charge coming out on the Twitch. Nice bubble as well. And Twitch does pick up N64 Vaki on Janna. And VGN looking yeah, very good. Here we go. This is what they needed. They got that in hit finally. That mid in hit is just going to give them so much pressure in that mid lane. They can now really push the other lanes while the team still has to defend mid. So they can put more heroes into those upper and outer lanes. It's just going to eventually crush the towers. And they can really just split push out of victory here. The, uh, what, um... It needs to do in this situation is they need to win fights, win them quick, and keep protecting. They need to pick the heroes off and just not let them split. But it's going to be extremely hard to do in their lineup. And I feel like if VG in play right here, they can't lose. They have to throw rather than anything else. So it's going to be interesting to see. I believe this tier tower, this final tower, could nearly go down. It's extremely low. They are falls back here. This is what VG need to be careful about. Nice, not big getting up. Into the towers. And there we go. They get the pick up on the Twitch as well. That's a load of the damage output gone. So now they just have to get right out of there. And this is the thing. They cannot get baited into towers like that. They cannot just get tripped into the objectives. Wrong decisions like that. Uh, Ince is the reactive team. They will pick up on it. They will initiate on that. And they'll crush your lanes. They need to be more careful than that. And be a bit wiser when they decide to take that tower. In the meantime though, the tower's extremely low. If they do another replica of that fight, the tower will go down. So they had that suicide push option, but they just lose one or two heroes. And here we see, oh, they're just checking to see the Baron. I'm hoping they do it. Commit to the Risky Baron, boys. Definitely Risky Baron, Risky Baron. Zed comes, still, uh, checks it out. That's going to uh, definitely encourage them not to go for it. They know they'll get caught. <laughs> Disappointed. I'm a big fan of the Risky Barons. Yeah, me too. So, Red is being stolen away from Bun Bun, but all of the N64 are there to punish him for this. Death Charge does come out, does get the knockup. Nola CC is good, and Xerath picks up the kill. Xerath is at a really fine place when it comes to damage, in my opinion. I talked about it before, no defensive items, but he has the damage to back it up. Has picked up that Void Staff, so the damage is even higher. So, very, very scary Xerath. As I say that, though, Shin pretty much face tanks everything, and, uh... 
He's got a lot of magic in this, so... Well, the yeah. thing is with Seraph is he doesn't need all the defensive items if he can just stand back and be smart with his positioning. He can just go extremely glass because he's got the range. However, with heroes like Shin, he's got to be extremely careful what happens. And right now, Braxel is right in there. And there comes the J4 too. Israel's getting extremely low. He's got that ignite on him too. I do... No! He just goes straight down. It doesn't matter about the ignite sick because Jibbers is going to pick him up. We now see Nautilus definitely on the run. He's taking a lot of damage and needs to get out of there. And Shin just being still on their base. In the meantime, though, we do have Shock taking out a kill on Twitch. That that's massive, and Purkle versus Renekton, definitely going to give that one to Renekton, even though he's on extremely low health. So Purkle's going to get in. There we go, shut down again. Zero picking up the kill on Jibbers. And here we just see their team crumbling. This is what they have to be careful about, not to throw these big team fights. They are going to... There we go, Braxel though, picking up Renekton. This is just crazy. I don't know what's going on. People just dying from both seeds. This is a really loose all-around fight from the team. Crazy. Purkle's going to be careful though. He is low. Same with Braxel. He's going to get hooked there. So Nautilus pulls him back. And he's just going to taunt into all three of them. Now I'm fighting for his life. Here comes Zed. Hopefully Zed can make the difference. Bun Bun on full health. Jumps in. Takes out Nautilus. And this is what they need. He's just going to ignore the other. Nautilus is going to be there fighting. No. I'm lost. Really lost. This side's too crazy for me. Jana goes down though. Zed chasing her over the uh, battle cast, the Zeraf. Zeraf's on the run though. He's low, but Zed smells blood. He's going to try to get him too. Well, Tommy by the Zed. He must have come alive and just ran straight into that fight. That's what they were stalling for too. And look at Perkle's life. This selfless support. So good. Staying alive. Got his warriors up and everything. I'm loving that guy. And look at this battle guard, Zeraf. He's actually successfully snuck away. He is going to recall. <laughs> it was an interesting decision for him to do so hard on that Jana. He did pick her up. I believe before he could get both, but the Zeref just sneaking off. Yeah, so what happened there is Zed ignited the Zeref and then went after the Janna. And I think he thought that Zeref was going to die to the ignite, but it wasn't even close. About 250 HP left on the Zeref allowed Zeref to, you know, get out of that fight, really. So he did pick up the Janna, but I'm not sure it was worth it. Zeref is sitting on, I think, a killing spree after that last fight, so definitely in a good place. And it looks like VG and are grouping for this Baron, and I'm just double checking the vision. And it looks like N64 do have one ward on it that was just cleared away. So Baron is low, lower than half HP, and Zerath comes in with his burst. Can he steal this one away? No, he cannot. Twitch does pick up the kill. Uh, Smite wasn't used there. Uh, Jibbers still has it. So Yeah, nice that's going to be Twitch. a big thing. They're really going to be happy to get that Baron, because that might be just what they need to push themselves over that over that hill they're climbing right now of getting into this base they want to break so bad. They still have that end of down. Surely be up soon, but they successfully defended one end of down and really turned around and did what we needed them to do. They started winning fights and getting kills. However, this Baron might be all they need to really just group up and start winning. Yeah, most definitely. And I am being alerted. This is going to be a best of one exhibition match. Just for all the viewers, this is just going to be the one game. So we've seen a good game so far though, definitely showing off what these teams can do. And Apexis on the Switch uh, is definitely one of the most impacting members of his team and uh, Smooth Move on N64, definitely the most impactful member of his team. He has got such an unconventional build without building that uh, Zonius his first item, but it's worked out for him and his team so far. And I'm wondering if they can hold on and you know turn this into a win. Definitely on the back foot however, the kills are 20 to 13 in VGN's favor and is about an 8,000 gold lead, almost 9,000 gold now, so very strong showing from VGN so far. And here we see, they want this inhibit, it's just respawn, and I believe they're going to get it for free here. Zeref's going to spit out a bit of damage, but I don't think they're going to hard collapse just yet. Their tower, the end is definitely gone, they've accepted that, they're going to spit out a bit of damage. Purple's really low, and more importantly, Twitch is extremely low. He was going to go down into Renekton, I'll be really surprised if he survives, but he actually, the exhaust, and starts kiting brilliantly. Renekton in a lot of trouble, the stun finally comes out, finally kills him, but Shock went from full health to below a quarter just to get that kill, and Purple picks him up now with the help of Jivers. So they do trade uh, the top laner for the ADC, but the get rid of that Twitch, I think it's worth it. They can lose anyone to get rid of Twitch. As long as he's down, that pushing power extremely drops for VGN and just that damage output. So they're going to be okay with that trade. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, Twitch, I, I wouldn't say we, he was really caught out there. That death charge coming up from Nautilus is so big. We're actually seeing VGN go back in. Uh, Zed has fired his ultimate. It looks like Ezreal will go down to that death mark. Jana goes down to Jarvan as well. Jibbers actually picks up a double kill there, so does 2v4 at the moment, 2v3. Nice burst coming out from Zareth, actually fight, gets the GA on Bun Bun. Will they be able to pick up the, the Zed? Nautilus is very tanky at the moment, does get taunted however. I think he's going to be able to walk away from this one. He's actually got some really sick items when it comes to tanking, so... The inhibitor does go down however, so that is two inhibs dead for N64. Death charge comes out as well, Jibbers taking a lot of damage. Zareth could land a nice stun here actually misses the long-range Arcano Pulse. 
Nice Dredge Lad coming up from the Nautilus though. Pulls back Varaxil. Varaxil is also very tank. I'm not surprised we didn't see them commit hard on him. I don't feel like they had the damage to, to, to break through that Shin, as it were. Yeah, it just feels like Inst is grabbing straws here. They're just going to get slightly strangled out. they now lost two in Hibs. The third one, the tower's almost dead. I feel like they're just going to get forced out of this game. Even if they keep winning the next few team fights, it's going to be extremely hard for them to actually do any structural damage in return. So I feel like this is, I'm going to be pretty aggressive and call it VGN's game, but I'm still prepared to see a turnaround. I'd love to see a turnaround here. Yeah, but my heart, it's, it's, it's telling me it's not looking good, to be honest. Nope, that's a fair call. The towers are 8 to 2, and that's the big factor at this point. The two inhibitors down. It looks like N64 are going to have to, to sit back and total as, as well as they, as they possibly can. I was about to say as aggressively as they possibly can, but that's not the plan at all. They should uh, turtle up and make sure they don't lose that third inhibitor. They should get some wards down so that they have vision of where BGN are coming into their base and try to try to stall this out until they, those inhibs are back up. Inhibitors do have a five minute respawn timer, so if they can hold on to that point until the inhibs are back up, they'll be in a way better place. And this could be it, they're actually getting a pick on this Nami, going down to very low HP. One more Arcana Pulse actually does collect the Nami as well. So that's exactly what they needed, they just needed a, a pick off of one member so they have a little bit more control. Yeah, that gives them a bit more breathing space, even though it is the Nami, and VGN will be happy it was her over anyone who was picked. It still is a loss to the team. They lose that tidal wave, they lose that stun as well, so it is a big loss, and it is gonna just make it a 4v5, and I do believe they have to back off. Nami will be down for another 35 seconds as well, though VGN still extremely dangerous with their four core heroes up. Yeah, they really are. But actually, we see Bun Bun take a whole lot of damage here, but that switch is spitting out a lot. The Spray and Bay in a brilliant position. We're going to see Jana picked off, so both supports are down. It's 4v4. Reaction wants to get that taunt. He does miss Ezreal, which is going to hurt him a bit. Now that Zerif turns around a nice position to spit out all the damage we knew she had. He, I don't know where Zerif is. I believe he's a guy. So I'll try to get that one right. And we see Jibbers actually sneak that top tower. It's the sneaky backdoor top. He's going to go for the inhib too. This is brilliant jungle play. They'll be upset to lose that. It's making it hectic too, but Raxel's in a lot of trouble. The Shin, oh, Coming out right next to the Twitch, just making sure he survives. And he's probably going to get out of here. But that is wants to kill. They're going to be careful now because they can just do that. Sneak these inhibs, sneak these towers. It's really referred to as checkmate. Once those three inhibitors are down, there's very little you can do to bring your control back on the map. Because if you leave your base for any extended period of time, the creeps will overrun it, super creeps will overrun it, and they can take the towers, they can take the nexus. So you be, need to just pretty much sit back and constantly farm, really, until that inhibitor has respawned and your control is back. So N64 are sitting on one inhibitor at the moment, and in the next minute or so, we will see that inhibitor respawn, and uh, that's a good place for them to be. They are holding on. Uh, it's uh, What's their expression? They're holding on by their nails? By the hairs of that chinny chin chin, yeah, but they are holding on. So, well played by, by them to stall this out. And we have finally seen that Zonia is picked up from the Zerath, sitting on 569 AP, a lot of spell penetration, and a very good place. He's actually on five items, five core items, and he's got a fortitude potion as well. So, and a very good place in terms of damage and survivability. He could have another item that's more geared towards uh, protecting him against attack damage, but I feel like he's he's definitely done as well as he possibly can. And we have got the inhibitor respawn for N64 in the mid lane. So now it's up to them to hold on and not lose these as VG does start their siege, really. Hanging by a thread. Thank you, Sushi. Oh my god, I was, I was completely at loss for metaphors, man. It wasn't good. It was not my fun. <laughs> Been a while since the old English class, hasn't it? <laughs> it's beating me, man. I'm defeated. And Zerath is defeat. being knocked up. Jibbers actually wins in. Uh, lots of damage coming up onto the Zerath, but it's not going to be enough. He has gone into his Locus power. Is he going to start firing stuff onto the Switch? It's actually even it's dead. Jibbers getting right in there. We get the Tidal Wave coming up, doing a lot of disruption. Zed just going all in hand on that Zerath for anyone to pick him up. He uses his uh, the Zonias though to stop that ultimate damage proccing. There's actually a lot of damage going down to Renekton right now. He's going to run. He will get to the Fountain in time. That will keep him safe. But just the base damage going down. We're going to see that mid and have just respawned go down again. Same with the top. So they're going to be all three down. Checkmate, as you were saying. I do believe it will be GG if those three go down. But Int's going to try to steal this game out as long as they can. Really try to bring it back. I do like to see a team not give up and have faith.
We have a dominating Xerath now. He's so strong in the defense, as I said earlier. Picking up the Twitch kill, and they are going to force everyone up. They do have their bot and her up now, but there is a super creep beating that up and a creep where they need to stop that. But it looks like they may actually be able to save all the inhibs, but their top Xerath just saving that mid inhib. That's really going to help them out. They want all those inhibs up if they're going to stay in there. But there's a shutdown. Come down. <laughs> Missed it all. I was looking at the inhibs, so that was crazy. It was a crazy Zara. Uh, sorry, Israel versus Shen one v one, and Shen and Israel have enough life steal to just sustain. They both got down to so low HP, and they both double knocked out. The last hit from both of them was enough to finish them, and it was a very cool thing to see. They have almost identical death diamonds, so they're going to come back at the same point. But that was a, a nice one v one, and N sixty four are holding on with another two inhibitors. So, mad respect for them for holding on. This is just incredible seeing them, you know, delay the game. The kills are now 26 to 21. The gold gap has decreased to around about 7,000 gold. Uh, maybe even a little bit less, about 6,500. So, huge, huge props to them. Yeah, and I'm really hoping it can really bring this game back. Baron is back up, so that's another objective that can be a big game turner. And they've got two inhibs up. They've done so well on this defensive lineup to just keep themselves in this game. This game's gone to 47 minutes. It felt like it was over. I was calling it over before. I'm just showing that I'm not the best player because look at that. They're really holding on, but it's surprising. And whenever I feel like it's just over, they just sneak these kills out, blow people up. And Zarep is so good on it. Now sitting on 837. So good at just picking off a kill suddenly on the defense. We do see the dragon pick up, but I think the Baron is the big one. I'm interested. I feel like both teams to start checking it out. The purple team's already worried. and It's already coming to check it out. They don't want to lose that Baron. They don't want to have to try and kill another nah, whole team. They've already done it once. <laughs> it's never a fun thing to have to do when you're losing and then realize the other team's also got the Baron. So they're being wise to check it out. They have got it watered, so they will know when they're interested in doing so. Purple's hanging around, though. He's got his oracles up. We'll be de-warding and warding up their jungle. And I feel like that's definitely the next big objective everyone's looking at. We have all the teams constantly rotating around, having a look at it. And we do see them jump in. They can see the ward. They're going to clear it now. But they know they've started the Baron, and they have started taking it. I believe they're going to disengage here because they know they've been caught. The ward was definitely seen. And here we go. The uh, Int does come up, and it's the Baron dance time. <laughs> I think that was uh, very well played by Virgin to disengage just there. Someone has to go back and deal with his creep wave in their base. Uh, super creeps are just nasty like that. Shen is horrible like that. When he has up and he does have Stan United, he is going to split push you for all your worth. Virgin have a lot of luxury here. They can just keep bearing those wards, can get on the Baron and just keep drawing all of N64's members. They've actually left the Renekton in the base to try to deal with these creep waves. And they are backing off Baron another time. So well played by N64 to to pressure them in a 4v5 situation, or 5v4 But that Baron has not reset his health, and he's still on under a quarter, so they do need to be careful. They got the ward though, and they're worried about the Zero Steel, but here we go, that's that Shen we're talking about. He's now taking a few whacks there in him, and if the big team fight breaks out, Renekton cannot get there while the Shen can, so they have to be worried about the 5v4. If they initiate, they have to make sure they get a good initiate on that Baron, because that Baron's gonna need to become their fifth hero, but it's not gonna happen. Jibbers is gonna pick up that Baron kill, and that's the second Baron coming out of the BGN, and that's really gonna help them out win this game. And Shen was just AFK on that inhibitor the entire time. Nice damage coming out from Srenekton, but it's not going to be enough. That is one tanky Shen. Baron buff is up, and unfortunately in 64 are going to have such a hard time in, in fighting against it. Five Baron buffs on that team, and that's an extra 200 ability power, 200 attack damage, mana regen, and HP regen. It's just huge. It's a really big advantage in favor of VGN. And the gold gap has increased slightly again in favor of VGN bringing it to around about 8,500. 8, so, nice nice bait, nice posturing, nice Baron dance, very well played by both teams, but unfortunately VGN just took that one away. I had a lot of faith in N64 for holding that one, maybe even getting a cheeky steal, but it just didn't happen. That's really unfortunate, but they played it pretty much as well as they could possibly have played that, so huge props. It's just such a such an amazing uh, tool that uh, Shen has in his kit to be able to just teleport back to your team no matter where you are in the team. It's a split push his dream, and they just really knew how to use that. The force renekton out. It just made the whole situation more intense with the 5v4 potential versus the Baron. It just made it so difficult. They went to try snipe it over the hill. It was always going to be difficult. They did have Zera for it. Zera may have got lucky. They could have got the lucky snipe, but in the end, Jibbers was cool. Karma collected as the jungler and did pick it up. So it's well done to him too. You don't want to choke that smoke. The Saint Vicious joke as it's known, everyone getting mad at him. But Jibber's showing that he's got the cool head to be a jungler. Yeah. It's one of those things like if you both have an equal damage smite and 
it's really up to up to fate, isn't it? Like, you can time it as well as humanly possible, but sometimes they just will smite that away for you. And that has a lot to do with reaction time and a lot to do with calculations, as it were. But yeah, nicely smited away by Jibbers. Especially when you've got a, a Zera doing that Arcano Pulse on it, and it's very scary. So Zed has a Guardian Angel, just checking who else has a Guardian Angel up. The, the Renekton does as well, so... Both GAs in the top lane, uh, Zed versus Renekton. It looks like they might go on one another. Uh, it would be a very interesting 1v1, because that is one tanky Renekton now. And the other members of VGN finally landing a taunt onto this Ezreal, and Ezreal does get slowed down by the Twitch. Now you wave is good though, knocking up four members of N64. Nice Janna disengage, she does flash out. It looks like this inhibitor might go down though. Shen ult onto the Twitch though. Yeah, that, that actually alive. does keep him alive, because he would have died to that Zera Blast, and they really want to keep him up, because he just does so much of that AD damage for pushing down things like Nexus. So that's a really good, really good play by Shen to use his ult for that, on such a good defensive purpose. They've got to do that though, you've got to keep that Twitch alive. He's just hanging around the back now, he doesn't want to get picked off, and we're going to probably see and try pick up a kill here, but they aren't able to do so. Good picking up, maybe I'm wrong, but it was really good stun set up by the Zera, followed up nicely by... Um, Nautilus, but Nautilus actually gets hit by that Burkle. Burkle's so good in the support, always ready to save his team. Throwing out that stun, keeping his friend alive. Yeah. Selfless, selfless support. Really, really big up to Burkle. He actually just plays so selfishly. You really see him put his team first, and that's actually just what you want on a support player. So the reason that fight went so bad for N64 is they didn't have an answer for Zed. Uh, Bunvel on Zed has been doing so well this game. Uh, basically what happened is in the top lane, it was Zed versus Renekton. Zed actually just flat out, took on Renekton in a 1v1 and trashed him. Renekton had to back away before his Guardian Angel was popped. So Zed was able to get that free inhibitor in the top lane, rotated down and got that free inhibitor in the mid lane because there was no one to deal with him at all. And unfortunately, the rest of VGN were able to pick up that bot inhibitor. So we are, as I called it earlier, a checkmate scenario in favor of VGN. Those super creeps will start piling in, uh, two super creeps per wave. And the minion, normal regular minions will have extra HP. So it's going to be very hard for Team N64 to clear these waves away successfully with VGN pressuring them with that Baron buff still. Uh, Baron buff doesn't have much longer left, however. I think it just timed out now, so... That is one thing in favor, although the rest of it is, is very in favor of VGN. Yeah, but look, they can take what they want, and like, they'll take what they can get is what I wanted to say. We really need to go back to English cars, Scott. <laughs> yeah, they yeah will, that's roll. They'll just be happy it's gone. They want to sort out these three, and if they can get them back, they've got another chance in this game. So it's really just battling against the clock here. They want to waste as much time as they can. They want to get any picks they can and just hold off this push, because all three lanes are really starting to put the pressure on these towers. And they got to just be careful. That Zed will want to dive in at some point and just pick one of them off. But VGN has to be careful here not to get overly aggressive and be baited into the wrong team fight because that will allow the other uh, the inhibs to respawn. But as long as they're smart about this here, they should be able to crush out this game. But it's all going to get dependent on the executions of team fights and who gets picked off. So everyone's going to be on fire alert here. Even though there's an advantage, it does not mean the game's over. They decided to do a bit of damage to these towers. They actually have to be really careful how much towers they can lose. And we see Bun Bun getting taken out. It's just this GA though, so he will be up. Shock's going to go down too soon, but he's going to GA. So both GA's being propped. Here comes the Twitch getting right and getting very aggressive. Spray and Bray up doing a lot of damage. Jibbers and taking a lot of damage. Everyone's doing a lot of damage, but we do see two arrows go down from, and it's Nautilus and it's Renekton. So they're both their double kill coming up from Zero. Wow, Mass nice damage. Play. Now, taking out Zed and Nami, so both of them just getting destroyed, but the main thing is two towers will go down, and now the base is in trouble. They're in a situation for the XPK, XPK, back door. That's what we're hoping for now. And we're going to see, it's going to be Paraxel going for it. He's just going for the win. I believe he will get it. Shin Tzu taking, no, they're going to take him. It's not going to be an XPK moment. Get the Given they order the creeps, they're still in the game at the moment. They're still in the big time. They're going all on the creeps, the creeps first the tower. Oh, it's taking a bit of damage. I do believe they're going to lose. There it is. GG. Well played. Minions win the game. Empty minions. But if we just see it, eventually squeezed out. It's that checkmate situation you're talking about. Too much pressure from all three lanes sealing that GG. All right, guys. So that was our exhibition match for tonight. That was VGN on the blue team versus N64 on the purple team. I'm not sure if they had a ringer. Uh, as Shock does not have the tag for N64. Uh, VGN did take that away, and I feel like the advantage really snowballed starting with the Twitch, really. Um, and basically, due to the fact that there were not enough defensive items on N64 early to deal with that 5 AD, uh, it was a very cool match to watch, really. N64 held on for so much longer than I expected they would. 
showcasing some really good defensive play. So just incredibly well played. Um, how do you feel about that match, man? I, I feel it was a little bit one side of the VGN. Like they definitely got the advantage early and really carried it through. However, I do think Inter did a brilliant job in the defense. They did a really good job to stay in there and make the game as long as it was. However, I never felt like they were ever in the driving seat and had the advantage. So it was a little bit one sided. However, it showed us an impressive match. They showed us what they could do and they definitely showed they're a strong team, not to be taken lightly. However, I felt VGN were quite confident throughout that whole match. Yeah, they were. <laughs> All right, so tomorrow night we will be doing our community event, and t tomorrow night's event is Demacia vs Noxus. So make sure you guys do tune into that tomorrow at 8 p.m. New Zealand Standard Time, and we will have that community event for you guys. So make sure you do jump in for that. Uh, in the meantime, before you do sign off, make sure you have liked our Facebook page, facebook.com/oceanicgaming, and facebook.com/thepeopleswhisperer. I will put both of those links into chat for you. Uh, so make sure you do hit the follow buttons and the like buttons and all that good stuff and do support us doing what we love to do. And, and please come check me out tomorrow, guys. Love those birthday events. We'll <laughs> see you all there. Do come. Watch that. Thanks, seats. That's me. All Thanks, done. Guys. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Signing off for tonight. Uh, thank you very much for watching and make sure to support us in the future. All the best. <laughs>